Hello and welcome to the second part of the lesson on IV curves, current voltage curves, sometimes called characteristic curves. And in part one, we looked at what a characteristic curve is, how to measure it, what it looks like for a, a filament bulb and resistor. In this part, we're going to take a look at the diode and what its IV curve looks like. We'll also take a look at some practical issues involving measuring an IV curve. I know many students haven't met a diode. This may be the first time you've heard or needed to know what a diode is. So let's start by briefly summarizing what a diode is. There are many sorts of diode. We're going to talk about the silicon semiconductor diode here. That is the most common one. And there's a picture here, a simple diode, just a small device with wires coming out, though they can come in a variety of shapes and sizes. The symbol for a diode in a circuit is a triangle, a bar, and the wires coming out. The device is asymmetrical. It depends, it behaves differently depending which way round you connect it. So one end of the diode has got a edge, a silver bar on it on the photo, silver ring round one edge. And that, sh that corresponds to the vertical line on the symbol. That's called the cathode. So when you look at a diode, you can tell which way round it is by identifying where the cathode is. You've probably heard of LEDs, light emitting diodes. A light emitting diode symbol is the same as an ordinary one, plus some arrows to remind you it gives off light. And here's a picture of an LED. Around the base, one edge of the plastic may be flattened to indicate which wire is the cathode. If we connect a cell, a battery, sorry, a cell, a diode and a bulb in series, this way round, the bulb will light. The conventional current wants to flow from positive to negative, clockwise. And that matches the direction that the diode's arrow is pointing. The triangle is like an arrow. And that means the diode will conduct. That will let a current through. The bulb will light up. In this arrangement, the diode is said to be forward biased. And the bulb would come on. Suppose we reverse the polarity of the supply. We turn the cell the other way around. Now the conventional current wants to go anticlockwise, but the diode is pointing in the opposite direction. The diode will prevent any current flowing round. In this arrangement, the diode is said to be reverse biased and the bulb won't light up. Here's four circuits for you to try. Can you identify which ones are, have the bulb on and which ones have the bulb off? If you pause your play, you'll be able to take a moment or two to work out for yourself which ones are on, which ones are off. I hope you got these answers. Top left, conventional current wants to go clockwise, but the diode is pointing the wrong way. No current can flow. On the right of that, the diode has been flipped around. So the diode is pointing in the direction of the conventional current. That one will be on. Bottom left, the conventional current wants to go anticlockwise. But the diode is pointing the wrong way. So the diode is reverse biased. It won't let the current go through. The bulb will be off. And bottom right, I'm sure you can work out for yourself, the diode will be on. OK, if we want to measure the characteristic of a diode, we do it just like a filament bulb or resistor, as we described in part one. We have variable power supply, voltmeter, ammeter. We'll take a set of readings. We'll measure the voltage and current, wind up the power supply a bit more, 
measure a new voltage and current, wind up the power supply, measure the new voltage and current, wind up the power supply, and get a set of voltage and current readings we can turn into a graph. And here's what we'd get. The characteristic for the forward biased diode, current against voltage graph, is the yellow line. It starts off zero, of course, and the current stays very small until we get to about 0.7 of a volt because the scale is marked in volts. After that, if we make the voltage bigger than 0.7 volts, the current rapidly rises. The 0.7 volts is a characteristic of the silicon diode. Different diodes might have different voltages, but there's a region where there's very little current. The diode has a high resistance. And then for higher voltages, the diode's resistance drops and the current can rapidly increase. If I want to do the reverse bias measurement, all I do is flip the power supply, just reconnect the leads the other way around, and now the diode is reversed biased. And I can measure the voltage and current as I wind up the power supply. Plot the graph and we get something like this. Again, start from zero, zero. As the voltage increases, very little current flows. Small amount, but very little. But at some point, the current suddenly starts increasing. We get a very big current flowing. That region here where the big current starts to flow is called breakdown. That's a breakdown current. And the breakdown current will only happen for voltages of, well, it depends on the diode, but several volts or even tens of volts, depends on the diode. If we put the two graphs together, the forward biased and the reverse biased graphs, looks something like this. And if you're a student, you need to know this graph. OK, that's all you really need to know about diodes for the moment. To finish off, I want to briefly say something about how to measure IV curves. If you have a variable power supply, there's no problem. We know how to do it. We've shown you how to do it in parts one and two. But supposing you only have a fixed voltage supply, like a battery or cell, can you measure an IV curve? The answer is yes, with the right equipment. One way to do it would be to have your cell and a variable resistor in series with the bulb. As you adjust the variable resistor, the voltage across the bulb and the current through it can be changed. You get a set of readings this way. But it's not a very good way, even though it's something students often draw. And the problem is, if you use this circuit, you can't get very small voltages and currents if you're interested in small voltage and current readings because even when the variable resistor is set to the maximum there will still be some current through the circuit and some voltage across the resistor so although it works it only has a limited range a bet circuit would be something like this here we're using a potentiometer, which is basically a resistor with a point that can be adjusted between the ends. So if the resistor was a thin wire, high resistance wire, the sliding contact would be something you could attach to the wire at different points along its length. And that's called a potentiometer. And when you find out about potential dividers, you'll learn a little more about potentiometers. For the moment, it's just a device with three terminals, and it can be used in this arrangement to give a variable voltage. And it's a very good way of doing it because you've got the full range of voltages possible. If the slider is put to the top, the sliding contact to the top, you get the maximum voltage from the cell. If the sliding contact is put to the bottom, 
you get zero volts so you've got a full range of voltages you can apply and your voltmeter and ammeter will give the full range of readings possible. You may be asked to explain how to measure an IB curve using a data logger. Well all you have to do is replace a voltmeter with a voltage sensor, the ammeter with a current sensor and then the sensors are connected to the data logger and the yellow lines represent the signal cables not single wires but the actual connecting cables and the data logger itself could be connected to a computer and that's all there is to it okay I hope you know a little bit more about characteristics now than you did to start with thanks for watching good luck with your physics